So let's dive right into it. I am dealing with a gentleman that is currently just going through a job transfer. So he got a brand new job and is living in a new state. Okay, this is a 40 year old gentleman. Um, so we have our, our income and expenses aren't really that accurate right now. So we're doing our best to really just underestimate income, overestimate on expenses, and try to pre-calculate some things that he's going to incur with the move, with the new job, new career, new whole new lifestyle pretty much, whole new way of living in a different environment. So the income we're looking at between as low as 9,000 a month to as high as 10,500 a month. But I'm gonna go off the 9,300 as my low number. And then in terms of expenses, we are overestimating and predicting some new things. So his expenses are 8,750. Right now, that's not really the case. His cash flow is gonna be way higher. Um, but there are some things that we're adding on. For example, he's going to uh, get a new car and he's estimating the value of the car at 40 grand and he's estimating the payment around $600 at like a 3% rate. So he's already factoring in that 600 into the equation. We have a student loan debt of $150,000. It's on deferment, so there's no payments required right now. Um, and the interest rate's at 4.75%. Now, being that the student loan is pretty high, I would have to wait until I see what that monthly payment is going to end up looking like. Looking like, If it's negligible, like under three, $400 a month, it's not worth taking the time let's just say in terms of this person's financial goals, what they want to do, what they want to accomplish. Sometimes there are debts that you will accumulate in life that may not have the greatest pull on you. Now I know the stance where you have people that are just, they don't want to have debt period. And I get that. That's, then we would cater a plan to pay off the debt, no questions asked. But sometimes I deal with a different caliber of individuals that want to say skip over the process of paying off all their debt. Maybe they want to wipe out certain debts that can get immediate cash flow gains, save a bunch of money on interest, but then kind of keep paying their debt. It's not like we're not paying it, right? It's not like we're not paying our debt. We're just prolonging the period because we have a different mindset in terms of taking our current four major numbers and 10 xing it, right? So to go from 9,000 a month to 90,000 a month, to go from $550 a month to 10 plus thousand a month in free cash flow, you know, um, and expenses, raising that up as well because the more money you make, typically your expenses will rise to a degree. If we're effective with our cash, we don't have to necessarily, you know, um, try to cater a lifestyle to someone that makes 50 grand a month. No, we can ideally increase our expenses only on the basis of what your business requires. But in terms of your personal lifestyle, that could maintain the same for as long as you so please to maximize cash, get to a certain level, then come back to a debt and just, you know, be done with it in one shot. That's totally fine. But in the beginning, sometimes we want to look at all options on the table. We want to view your personal financial development so far. We want to view your financial goals. Are you an entrepreneur? Are you a, you know, or are you the right hand man, the second hand man, you know, the number two to number three man in a company, right? And if that's the case, then maybe paying off debt 
in terms of when I'm looking at situations, that might be the best route to go. And then just creating defense plans, like creating assets that never lose money, things like that, until you grow into a stage where you're like, okay, I want to build something for myself. For this individual, he wants to build something for himself. He's got a great new career, new job, right? He loves it there, but he understands the, the different um, perspectives. You know, should I just focus all my attention on paying off debt? Or is there an opportunity to leverage some capital, some cash flow to acquire an asset or two early on to, you know, overtake what I'm paying in debt? No matter what you do in your personal finances, you're going to pay interest in some way, some way, shape or form. So, and uh, Garrett Gunderson puts this perfectly for um, people when he, when people are watching his YouTube videos is he's like, look, if you're going to spend your whole life paying off debt, sure, you're going to save money on interest and you're going to wipe out a bunch of debt and you're going to have guaranteed cash flow gains. But just understand that you also are forfeiting interest in terms of investing money or 10xing your income or focusing on something that you can build for yourself that could overtake your debt in one shot. The flip side to that is you could focus all your attention on investing, making money, 10xing and failing, losing money and still be in debt. So one has maybe greater risk for the majority of people. So that's why on this channel, I try to take people through a process. Let's evaluate where you currently are in your personal finances with your four major numbers, with your current assets, cash on hand, your certain money habits. Let's evaluate that first and then decide, do I need to start at ground zero, right? So where is ground zero? Ground zero, this is before ground zero even started. This is debt snowball. This is before, this is old school. This is before school started. Debt snowball, okay? Ground level. One step above that, okay? Because ideally, when it comes to your finances, you do not want to stay in, let's say, a concept for too long. You don't want to be closed off to other possibilities of things that we can do with your money, right? So one simple level above debt snowball is velocity banking, okay? Well, debt snowball has its place, right? It's for people who, let's say, are not disciplined with money. They're not ready for velocity banking. They need to learn. They need to learn about credit. They need to learn about management. They need to learn about, you know, stewardship and giving and tithing and um, spending less than what they make and repairing credit, okay, to get to the stage. So once I've positioned myself for velocity banking, then I make the move. Boom, go to velocity banking. One step above velocity banking is the infinite banking concept, okay? Please don't get confused with the terminology. I understand there's many terms used for these, but when you think debt snowball, just think Dave Ramsey, Susie Orman. When you hear velocity banking, think mortgage acceleration, debt acceleration, just think 2.0 of debt snowball. So velocity banking is the 2.0 method, right, of debt snowball. We're using debt to pay debt. We're using debt to leverage. We're using debt to make money. We're using debt to invest. We're using debt to save. We're doing what major corporations, major institutions, banks, we're doing what the United States of America does to create money out of thin air. We are violating a mathematical rule one plus one equals two. We are violating that on paper, right? But then when we add cash to the equation, math and money 
are the, you could say they're the same, but technically under a particular governmental system, the money may not match up to one plus one equals two in many situations. Because what do we have? We have something called fiat currency. It's fake, has no value. So it's not one plus one, it's 1.346, 1.86 to the euro, to the pound, to the Australian dollar, to the American dollar, to, right? There's a fluctuation. So one plus one doesn't always equal two. Right, if I took a dollar to Colombia, that dollar does not equal one dollar. That dollar becomes 2,500 plus pesos. So now one equals 2,500. How the hell did that happen? Fiat currency, devaluation, uh, reserve banking, debt acceleration. So. Once your mind is able to get out of that kind of one plus one attitude, right? And start thinking a little bit differently on, okay, yeah, I get one plus one equals two. That, that doesn't change on paper. One plus one will always equal two, right? One plus one will always equal two on paper. But add this, one, one what? One apple, one orange, right? Like one what? One US dollar in a particular environment can become, like I said, 2,500 pesos. In Guatemala, one dollar equals seven dollars, right? In some countries, it's matched one for one, right? In others, the dollar is worth less. I go to Europe, one dollar is less, right? The euro is more valued than the US dollar. So, when you realize that, you then say, okay, well, that $1, what is that? Is that $1 cash in my pocket? Is that $1 of credit? Is that $1 leveraged? Is that $1 in an asset? So, you, you know, you begin to think. You open your mind to new possibilities. So, let's say that happened for you. So, now you graduate. Now you're doing velocity banking. Right now you're changing things, okay? And then the next stage after that is infinite banking. So infinite banking is taking the same thing as violating a rule of one plus one equals two, where we can immediately send one US dollar into an infinite banking policy. So now what are we talking about? This is, this is, um, whole life insurance or IUL, the two major um, policies that are used to leverage cash to do what? Pay off debt, save money on interest, create wealth, compounded, tax-free, okay? All those spicy hot words that you'll hear on the internet, different videos, okay. Um, the different terminologies, you've got become your own banker, you've got private uh, banking, your family bank, tax-free banking, many different bank on yourself, right? Many different terms. We can just kind of wrap it in infinite banking. Infinite is a key word. Is it you create an infinite banking system in your own household. So Debt Snowball teaches you how to what? Manage be resourceful, be a good steward, protect, right? Create protection plans, emergency funds, right? Gets you on a, on a system of management of money. Velocity banking gets you to that next stage of using and leveraging things to acquire more things that pay off things faster, that accumulate things faster. So it's speeding up debt snowball. You're learning how to do what the banks do with their money, how they take $1 and they turn it into $9. So you would be learning how to do that with your own 
personal finances. Infinite banking now allows you to become the bank where you can take a dollar and make it three. You can take a dollar and make it five. You can take a dollar and make it nine, make it 20, make it 50, right? You can over time, of course, all right? So um, we'll just deal with those three stages for right now. And we're gonna identify these numbers that we're dealing with, this person that's on the board. Now, because this person has very good income, just increased his pay. This person has about 30 plus thousand cash on hand. He's got these different retirement accounts. He has money in different places. He's got the emergency fund. He's managing money. It may not look like he's not managing, but in reality, once he gets settled, his cash flow is going to go up quite a bit around the thousand plus or so range. So he'll be good. He'll be okay. So with that being said, the way I like to qualify myself and my clients that I work with, so on the board here is a client in my one-on-one -on -one Velocity Banking Bundle program, okay? So that means I am getting to know this person, I'm getting to see all their numbers, right? They're, I'm, I'm cutting out all the guessing work. We're getting right down to the, you know, the nitty gritty stuff. So the question is, what can this person do with their personal finances? We are assuming a debt of you know, 200,000. I could either do the debt snowball concept for the next, say, 10 plus years with the cash I have and managing, and I could probably get out of debt in less than nine years, you know, if I'm really good. Okay, no doubt. Probably even go faster than that. Okay, the problem that comes up is the amount of time, the amount of cash that we that he would have thrown at debt. He would have sacrificed the opportunity to what leverage one dollar more than once. Okay, we would have sacrificed the opportunity to create assets in the same timeline. Same exact timeline. So velocity banking would be the next, you know, oh, let, can I do that? Well, sure. He's got good credit. He does not have a debt tool. So with velocity banking, we always need a debt tool. A credit card, a line of credit, a HELOC in the first or second position, simple interest, revolving, right? Maybe some cash back rewards with a credit card. 0% offers, or an infinite banking policy can also be considered a line of credit. Okay. So he could easily start with velocity banking, no doubt. We've got one credit card that we owe 10100 on. He's paying 200 a month. I could do velocity banking with the credit card. Gather the expenses that can be paid with a credit card. Take the cash flow. Take the monthly payment, that's 750 plus say two, three thousand of bills, and knock that out in four to you know four or five months. Done. Right? And that's like a great win. He could he could do that now, no doubt. Okay. Now, infinite banking is interesting. When I'm dealing with someone that has these three things: capital, cash flow and good income, okay? Is usually like what I like to see, or instead of good income, I'll replace that for like a debt tool, okay? So I like some really four things, right? It's capital, cash flow, a debt tool, good income, okay? So really four things. Now, if someone has all four, they're immediately qualifying themselves to potentially skip over debt snowball velocity banking right into infinite banking. Doing infinite banking not only cuts the timeline of just paying off debt, but we introduce the idea of creating a tax-free savings asset, not an investment, a tax-free savings asset, which allows us to deploy money into investment opportunities.
right? So this isn't an end all be all strategy. This is a and or. This is a plus two. This is a feature benefit. It's just a tool, right? It's not the end all be all, but it is the central system that sends out cash into different places and has it work for you, okay? So very effective.